Hi folks, today we're looking at the rearview mirror car recorder, which is a 1080p rearview mirror with a 4.3 inch LCD in there. So you can use it for a dash cam, it has a dash cam in incorporated, and also it can uh, double up with a second camera to look rearwards for parking and stuff like that. These, these rearview mirrors have been around a long while, but this is a, the latest, the high definition 1080p version. So it has a, a few more bits of functionality with it okay let's have a look inside the box it comes in a, a fairly nice little box here a little um, simple simple box you might say and nicely packaged and this is the actual unit itself inside the the main part of the box you have the accessories you need to to set it all up and we'll run it up into a car in, in a minute so these are straps that go on the back of the actual unit to hold it to the existing rear view mirror power cable, micro USB power cable, so that's good, I like that. Extension cable for the next camera, the additional camera. This is the camera you can use to do rear view, rear view uh, parking and that kind of stuff at the back. Um, and a very simple multilingual instruction manual, just covering the basics of how to install and what the buttons all mean. Okay, so let's look at the unit itself. Well, as I said, it's it's a uh, it's not huge. I mean, it's 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 a, a, obviously larger than a standard rear view, unless you've got a truck, <laughs> and you can just probably see there the the LCD. And actually, on the back here, you'll see the dash cam, which is swivelable, so that's good. It gives you the ability to to aim it where you want it to go rather than just relying on it being fixed which is a problem I believe with the older versions and at the top here you have the um, interfaces so you basically have USB you have AV in that's the micro SD card it takes up to 32 gigabytes of micro SD and power and on the bottom which I think is quite a nice touch as long as it stays robust you get the controls so these are for settings the menu settings mode whether you're going to go into uh, what type of video etc and cycling through the menu options and this also uh, doubles up the mode button as a emergency lock of video so when you're uh, when you're in, in an event uh, if you are then you can press that button and it will stop uh, lock the video and, and prevent it being overwritten and that just folds up neatly there when you don't need it so it's quite it's quite nice it's it's quite a clever little uh, and quite an elegant little little solution and it actually works quite well if, if you look at the these these rubber connectors if you like they fit and hold the unit in the mirror like so and so it's quite steady uh, on your existing camera you don't have to plumb anything in in other words uh, actually the only uh, let me think the only thing that you really do have to um, consider is if you want to run the rear view mirror you're going to have to think about it looks like power so what happens is you get this extension cable which goes into the AV out uh, AV in on the unit here so like so oh that's GPS by the way if I got that wrong so that goes into the AV in and the camera itself plugs into the secondary camera plugs into the unit like so and this I believe is the power unit, which you have to find a, um, a suitable power uh, source to run the camera. I believe the power source they recommend is the interior light. So that's going to require some fiddling about with the headlining um, to get that put in there elegantly. And then you just stick this to a suitable surface, adjust the camera, and there you go. Bob, as you, they say, is probably your uncle. So that's a little bit of a, a, a little bit more specialist tool. Of course, you don't have to have this camera. You can just rely on the single forward facing dash cam type camera, in which case it's a, an absolute cinch to just plug in the USB cable here and feed it into your cigarette lighter or whatever. And that's perfectly normal. That'll work fairly well, as we'll see in a minute. 
Okay, so here the here we are with the uh, unit, the rearview mirror camera installed in the car, and as you can see, it's uh, very readable. In the the LCD is very readable um, in the daylight. Um, it's pretty good actually, quite clear. Obviously, it doesn't stay on all the time. You can you have a user con configurable setting. We we set it on for a long period of time so we can give ourselves enough time to see it working properly. The control panel, as I said before, is under here. So here's where you do all your bits and pieces. You press the menu button and you get you, uh, the settings that you can change. So here's some of the settings, uh, average uh, white balance, exposure, color, watermark if you want to put one in there, auto recording, um, so you can set it to auto record when you turn the car on obviously, uh, frequency 50 or 60 hertz, and that's uh, parking monitoring, which is the sort of thing that which is supposed to be useful for people who do hit and runs if you're in a car park. I suppose that sort of thing happens much more in China or various places where these products come from. Well, G sensors in there, so you can set the sensitivity of the G sensor so that you can make it either, you know, particular uh very um high sensitivity or middle or low or even off so if you don't so if you have a um the reason you use the g sensor of course is if you have a an incident um so that you uh, it automatically will lock the video and, and store that for you um, backlight time and power off obvious things like that the fill light i'm not really sure about that's something to do with um like a flashlight on the flash unit on the back but i'm not quite sure how that would work through the windscreen Digital zoom. Digital zoom is an interesting one. This is a 120 degree uh, uh, camera lens. So here, so if you set the digital zoom, you can get a rather horrible but 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 different uh, view of, of going out the windscreen. So if I if I change that to let's try, let's try two times. There you go. Quite very pixelated, but it, it narrows the angle of. Um, of view so i i guess that's for people who don't like that particular type of widescreen what else have you got here we have date and format and uh, the default settings and version and stuff and that's it really and so once you've set all that up then it's just sitting there ready, ready to photograph uh, to video every time you uh, you start up and as you can see the cable goes in the top you can see the adjustable camera here at the end and these rather clever connect, um, what do you call it, uh, brackets, rubber brackets to hold it on to the existing, existing rear view mirror. So it, it's, it's a very elegant and, and very simple DIY job. As I say, the only tricky bit is if you want to have the second camera attached, in which case you're going to need to find it to, to work out how to get the power supply from the uh, from the the interior light socket. We'll run up some test video from a, a test run just to let you see what it looks like when you're actually driving. <laughs> but it's pretty cool actually, it's pretty good. Well, there you go the rear view rear view mirror cam uh, car camcorder it's a, an elegant little solution it works it's very simple to implement um, and it actually doesn't look too obtrusive at all it's really quite efficient it gets a thumbs up for from us for in terms of usefulness as usual if you've enjoyed this video please subscribe to the channel so we can bring you more cool stuff like this thanks very much